Ben is here pontificating and bloviating about stand up, and somebody from the Friday Kiss subreddit put together this cool little clip and edit compilation of him talking about good and bad stand up, you know, cut in with a few of his bits that people think are awful. And there's a conversation going around of if Joe Rogan funny, is he funny or not, or is he just a brilliant podcaster that happened to kind of segue it into stand up, which kind of sounds similar to like another guy beginning with B, surname beginning with S. But let's continue. There's a lot of mediocre comedy out there. She never says no, because if she did, I'd rape her. There was a lot of people that were doing what sounded like like a, an impression of what a comedian should sound like. Oh, how does this work? When he comes, his whole body just erupts. <laughs> Make everybody laugh before we're about to spar. I'm not that retarded! It looks fucking stupid! I'm not looking for a country mouth fucking, I'm just trying to enjoy the great outdoors. And make my friends laugh when we go fight in tournaments. I'm at home, my phone buzzes, I go, ah! This is just being gay, that's all. Ass in the air. Okay, so, my hot take on this is this. Bear with me here. I don't think Rogan is not funny in the way people are saying. Because I think nowadays, because Brendan is so bad at stand-up comedy and because Rogan was predominantly the person who was kind of responsible for putting Brendan out there, him and Brian Cannon and shit, it's kind of making Bre 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 Joe Rogan's kind of overall you know, comedic integrity and whatever. It's calling into question because of how bad Brendan is. So I think Brendan has kind of fucked up our barometer of what good and bad is right i essentially think having watched a lot of stand-up co comedy specials over the years having trying to get into watching them more often because i do the stream i've kind of come to the conclusion i think a lot of people have especially over the years that a lot of stand-up specials are really hard to enjoy at home anyway to watch them at home and to kind of laugh especially if you've got your phone in hand you're not paying attention it's in the background it's just difficult to kind of connect with specials and most of them technically maybe on the kind of, you know, conventional sense aren't funny. But I think the major part of it is that a lot of these guys are really funny when you're in person. If you're watching them live, I think you could definitely catch some LOLs. You've got some beers down you. You've got a couple of chicken fingers in your stomach. You're definitely going to be able to laugh at a couple of their jokes. I think when you're removed from it at home, watching it from your laptop or your smartphone, it's a bit hard to connect with them. The greats can do it. Some of the best people out there that are really funny can do it, I'm sure. But overall, it's really difficult to find genuinely good like stand-ups or special story that you can recommend to loads of people that you would think loads of people would agree it's funny or not. So I think a lot of stand-up specials are quite subjective and comedians. I legitimately think they're subjective. So I think there are people out there who enjoy the Rogan way of doing stand-up, the whole shouty, shouty thing he does, the physical comedy side of things, the humping of the stool, the weed jokes, all that shit. There are people out there that enjoy that level of comedy. It's not for me personally. I think it's redacted as fuck to hear a guy who just started smoking weed in his 40s talking about I'm so high and shit. It's kind of cringe, right? It's like him coming out in a pair of weed socks and shit. It's just a little bit lame. Um, the obsession we're talking about monkeys and, you know, all that shit like DMT, whatever. The stuff he talks about in his podcast, I just can't do with it. But I also don't think it's his fault. The fact that he's got the most popular podcast in the world and sometimes the fucking lines get blurred. It kind of is what it is. But I'm sure people out there do enjoy it. is he not funny in the way that brendan shaw is not funny no and i don't think that's fair to say because brendan shaw is not funny in a way that we can all agree brendan shaw shouldn't be doing stand-up comedy he shouldn't be doing stand-up brendan shaw is nearly 10 years into stand-up and all he's got to show for it is fucking what you call it putting what you call it putting a uh, sriracha on fucking cookies and calling it a mexican cookie um that joke about fucking the texas you know mayor and shit whatever horrible horrible jokes and he's nearly 10 years in so clearly he just doesn't have it and i think there is something to be said for starting stand up you know in your mid 30s when you are a professional athlete your entire life it's just really difficult to become funny but we can categorically say all of us can agree that brendan shawb is not funny will never be funny no amount of time will make him funny and he shouldn't be doing stand-up comedy 
that is a wrong way to judge comedians. You shouldn't be judging them from, are you Brendan bad or are you some, you know, Dave Chappelle good? That's not the good parameter to say, personally for me. Where, whereas I think like, there are, like, cause I don't think, you know, I have to question your, your, I have to question your level of redactedness if you genuinely think Brendan Schaub is funny. Like, I have to ge generally question your ability to kind of look after yourself if you legitimately watch his special and you're laughing, you go and buy his tickets and shit, go and see him all around the country because you think he's funny. That just doesn't make any sense. But I definitely do think there are people out there that will enjoy Rogan's version of stand-up. For sure. What do you guys think in the chat? Is my take redacted? <laughs> do I have a point? Or what else? Let me know in the chat. What do you think here? Um, yeah, we're not the same people if you generally think he's funny. Yep, agree that, Natashki. Uh, what people are saying, yeah, Papa has given us more lows than any comedian ever cares, not deliberately. It, big good point, Tyler Durden. Cheesy take, says Megan Fan. Fair enough. All my friends think I should be a comedian. Sounds like all my friends say I'm a good comedian. I'm a good enough cook up in a restaurant. Exactly, Robert Means. Agree. Red Band hangs out comics. Which are saying if there are people out there who like Very Den, then there are deaf people who like Brett Rogan. Okay, I agree with that one. Crash says he makes jokes on his radio show. Vagabond says he could be want this to shot a criticism. No, Vagabond, I don't agree with this one. There's something people have to let go as well. This idea that Brendan's going to listen to constructive criticism and he's going to suddenly be a good stand-up, it's not happening. If it would have happened, it would have happened already. The guy's never going to be funny. Never, never. Think about it. He's nearly 10 years in. I think, if I'm not mistaken, Gringo Pappy marks his eight, seven or eight year as a professional stand-up. Seventh or eight year. Usually the second special is better than the first, usually for the most part, especially if you wait the designated time. I think most stand-ups say they wait around, you know, over five-year mark before you do your first special. But usually the second special should be better than the first. Obviously, the first one maybe is your life's work, but in terms of your stage presence, the way you kind of, um, your breath control, your pacing, maybe the in cleverness and how you're using lines and words, all that stuff should be a little bit more fine-tuned. Think about it. Gringo Pappy, how much better is that than you'd be surprised? Not much. My hot take is that you'd be surprised is better than Gringo Pappy. I know it's an hour long, but I legitimately think he came across, it's hard to even say because you'd be surprised is so bad, but I generally think you'd be surprised is better than Gringo Pappy. I think he's actually regressed. He's actually got worse over time, if that's possible. Like, it's weird to say, he's actually worse, if possible. So this idea that he's going to get better with constructive criticism, let's just mark that out. It's not happening. He's not meant to be a stand-up. He should be just be doing live podcast shows, which he would make a killing on, I think. There's loads of... I think there's more TFAT K fans out there than Brendan Short fans, especially if you combine Brendan and Brian Callan's fan base. Brian shouldn't be going on fucking Crowder and getting cucked, personally. He should be going on the road with Brendan, Right? and getting cut by somebody that he actually knows and that he actually likes and they should be doing shows under the T-Fight K umbrella and doing live podcast show things with skits and bits and shit, whatever. That's what they should be doing. Brendan should have, he's in no place to be going around on tour doing stand-up on a stage like he's a serious stand-up comedian. It's not the lick. It's never going to work, in my humble opinion. But like I said, I don't think Rogan's as bad as people say he is. I just think it's a, for a particular type of person who's into that kind of shouty, shouty comedy. It just sounds like what we saw in the clip. That Kai Cena and I Show Speed trailer I, I showed you guys earlier. I saw a few people in the chat saying they didn't like it, pass, skip. They weren't fans of it. But that type of comedy, that type of humor on the internet, that whole screaming and being over, over the top, some people do legitimately think that's funny. That legitimately is a good sense of humor for them that kind of makes them laugh it kind of makes them cry it makes them lol it kind of makes them lmao like legitimately it's not for me but it definitely does so i'm sure there are people out there that appreciate rogan talking about weed and fuck and you know and practicing fucking stores and shit for sure but i generally don't think he's as bad as people say they do and again i could be wrong i could be wrong okay here uh let's move on from that one. Oh yeah let's see and then obviously to add on to this one as well 
there's this um page as well i want to quickly check out and see what people say regarding it this is an instagram post courtesy of the instagram page unathletic brand i think this is why i kind of saw the general conversation around joe rogan and his comedy whether or not he's funny or not this is a funny meme um with winnie the pooh joe rogan talking about stand-up comedy and joe rogan performing stand-up comedy this is the thing i think when rogan's talking to the right guests like i think when rogan spoke to that guy that's a germaphobe i forgot his name i think that whole comedy shop conversation was really entertaining i really enjoyed that it depends who he's speaking to. I don't actually mind the whole business of stand-up conversation. It kind of works sometimes. But it's just funny how people get really, really, really pissed off when he starts talking that way because they think his comedy isn't that great. But I legitimately do think a lot of the reason people act that way with with um, Rogan is because of him promoting and pushing and platforming fucking um, Brendan Schaub. I think the fact that he told Brendan Schaub to be a stand-up comedian and essentially co-signed him in a weird way has sullied people's impression on Rogan in general which I think is unfair because if you really kind of do the science and the law Rogan never really ever said that Brendan was a good stand-up he said he's a funny guy on podcasts and shit and whatever but I never once heard him say Brendan is funny on stage you should go watch him perform buy his tickets he's never been that guy he's always gonna have his way to never really say that and I think he knows deep down that that guy stinks when it comes to comedy. Let's see what people say in the comments here regarding this post. So I'm curious to see that. Um, what are people are saying here. All this Rogan bashing. I know you. I know who your first sponsored athlete should be. Okay, heard it both ways. His podcast is overrated as his comedy. Process that information in whichever way you choose. Do you guys think that? I don't think that's true. Do you guys think Rogan's podcast is overrated? I think in terms of like. I like to rate podcasts in terms of like background listening ability. If I put it on in the background, will you make me want to turn it off? Because you just kind of leave it just to kind of listen to in the background as you're doing other shit. And I think Rogan's got a pretty good, decent replay value when it comes to background, you know, sounds. The only times I want to really turn it off is when there's too many ads. What do you guys think? Oh yeah, that's, yeah, that's good. Good point, Teju. Thank you for the tip. I should do a poll. Let's, let's see what the what the crowd thinks. I don't think it's overrated at all. That's an interesting point there. Let's see. Um, do you think Joe Rogan's podcast is overrated? No, podcast is overrated like his stand-up comedy is. Uh, let's see. Let's see what you guys say here. I'm curious to see what the crowd thinks here. Let me know via this chat down, this poll chat down below. Do you think Rogan's podcast is overrated like his stand-up comedy is? Yes, no, Axe J. Let's see what the crowd thinks. Um, let's continue here with the comments. It says here, yeah, comedies have a pivotal role in society as a translator of the zeitgeist of the people at large. We are fulfilling the eternal archetypal role of the court gesture. Humster. Okay, cool. This guy makes a good point. <laughs> exactly. Humster while howling like an ape. Okay, fair play. I see what these people are saying here. Another one. Her, heard it both ways. Oh, wow. I've never seen both spelled that way, actually. I see it spelled the B-A-W-L-T-H way, but I've never seen it spelled the B O. WF way, both ways. I love the pronunciation and spelling here. Um, it continues, no stores are safe. Papa Toe is a murderer bee, absolute beast of a comic. Phantom, <laughs> a phantom bee, comedians are Netflix, Papa. What are we doing here, Papa? We don't matter, dicey, dicey. <laughs> Talking about comedians, son. Honestly, this is fucking amazing. Big <laughs> up the comments. There's loads of homeless cats in there. But I guess the crowd have spoken. A lot of them don't fuck with Rogan's comedy. But let's see what the poll's saying. What are the people saying here? I don't think his podcast is overrated at all, man. I think that was a horrible thing people are saying here. Okay, so far, 50% of people are saying it's, it's overrated. Wow. Okay, we've got a lot of people here not fans of Rogan, then, I guess. Um, Obviously, the topics get a little redundant, says Robert Minas, but there's so many hours of content that's normal. Yeah, exactly. And also, I just think in general, for the level of guests and stuff, I think overall, I think he does a really good job. Um, Max Fisher said that would overrate it as well. What's so Max Fisher, what do you say here? I would be over it if it were, if it were, thought Will Ferrell was a comedian. Paul Rudd's a great comedian, Max Fisher says. He looks like a Hobbit's farm. 
Charles Lucas says it all depends on the guest, but it doesn't have the pull for me to watch every episode, only if topic interests me. Can you imagine how many early comics have been living in fear? Those boys have been raping, bullying on Rogan's name. True, shared Cal. At some time in the past, it made more sense to hold a podcast and Joe Rogan in high regard for his role in society. To be honest, not as f- yeah, okay, Ty Durden said the truth. To be honest, not as fun since Spotify. I think a lot of people, once they got, once they lost Rogan in their rotation on YouTube, I think they found other things and they realised Rogan didn't, wasn't really as important. I think that's what happened. The kind of absence and the kind of time away with him being on fucking Spotify really kind of damaged his reputation in some people's point of view. I think so. Because he was so omnipresent on fucking YouTube, you just were forced to watch him. Then once he went away and you start to see other shows pop up, you're like, hold on, these other shows are much better. And they, you know, especially when it comes to just being just for the funnies. If you're just there for the funnies, you don't care about fucking, um, you know, you don't care about culture war shit. You don't care about cancel culture shit. There's so many other podcasts you could be listening to. And I think nowadays, the last thing I want is to hear a comedian telling me how I should live my life. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. I don't want to hear some fucking comedian who's a one percenter, right? Who lives in a gated community telling me how I should live my life or how I should go about raising my family or whatnot. It's just, it's just too much. I can never take that shit seriously. So maybe there's a bit of that also in it. People are saying here, what? Those I <laughs> Natashki, those ice baths don't seem to be helping because he's aging aggressively. <laughs> That's mean, Natashki. That's mean, <laughs> but very true. Shreya's curse says I miss Jerry live and Jerry chat. Yeah, to me too, man. That Jerry live, we took that shit for granted, man. Um, council culture really fucked him over with that one, but mostly, um, that Spotify contract was just too good to turn down. That legitimately might be the best deal in the history of podcasting to get given three hundred million which Burt Kreischer should fucking leak because he fucking they've never keep a secret. He got paid 300 million to license his podcast on Spotify for a number of years. 300 million, which means when the contract's up, if he wants to leave, he can leave and go back to YouTube or do whatever he wants. To license his podcast for 300 million for whatever, five years, six years, whatever it means, was the best deal ever. He, he, he would be dumb not to take that money, to be fair. Even though I remember reading he was making already 30 to 50 million anyway a year off the show year by year so he would have got to that if he wanted to but shit shit exactly in Tashki. no including the brand deals it's just too much man it's just too much i don't blame him for taking the deal so um yeah rogan isn't as bad as people say he is in my opinion but i also understand why people are not really big fans of him let's go up again back let's go back to the poll again here Fucking hell. 49% of you people are saying the podcast is overrated. Shit, okay. I guess I must be the only person that still tunes in weekly to the pod and just has it on in the background and shit. Um, passively listening to it whilst I'm doing my other bits and bobs. Maybe because I work from home as well. I'm just always listening to stuff. I just have that on because it's like three hours. That knocks out some time. I listen to my other podcast. I might put Red Scare on, Perfume Nationalist. Um, how long gone, a few other bits and pieces, right? I'll just have them in the background just to kind of, you know, make time go away. Um, Matt and Shane's secret pod is really good as well. Um, that's a really nice one I've kind of discovered over the last recent years. So yeah, maybe that's why. I'm not actually listening, listening to it. I've just kind of got it in the background as I'm working and shit. So maybe that's the reason why I'm not really that bothered with the dip in quality overall. Maybe, 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 maybe. Um, Let's move on from that one. Let's move on. Let's talk about... Yeah, that's one. Um, big up Thief Keith. I've heard people mention War Mode, and I think I might actually be subscribed to it. What's War Mode? I've seen people mention War Mode a few times. Who's... Uh, let's see, actually. Let me, let me just see on my overcast thing. Who's War Mode? I think I might be subscribed to it. Yeah, I actually am. I'm subscribed to it now. War Mode is the official War Mode podcast. Please enjoy. Who's the host of War Mode? It doesn't say it on the thing. They don't even put descriptions on there. I love podcasts that don't have descriptions. It's fucking the best. They do the they do the even the least amount of effort is too much. You get it edited, you get it uploaded and shit, but no descriptions. There's literally no descriptions, nothing. It's just the title of the shows. War mode is our Matt and Shane's buddies. Okay, cool. 
Oh, okay, is it? Okay, cool. I didn't know about it. Thanks for that. I'm going to definitely check that as well, add it to my list. But I've seen War Mode mentioned a few times by people, so I'm definitely going to check that out. Um, but yeah, uh, what's this thing called? Shade Cow said, it's an addiction to the app. YouTube dominates, especially compared to Spotify. He moved with no video on Spotify. This means what, um, it wouldn't switch over. I would. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah, I get, I get what you mean. I get what you mean, Shade Cow. I definitely understand what that means. Um, okay, there's loads of conspiracy theories on Walmart. Okay, cool. I'll check that out. I'm curious to check that out. But if you haven't as well, if you look into some um, shows to check out there, definitely check out the ones I already mentioned. Of course, the Walmart is another one to kind of add to a list of stuff. Like, I like to listen to podcasts personally for me um, that just don't try and talk too much about politics. No more culture war to shit. Not much about the fucking council culture shit. Like, I like just like, if you're going to be a comedy based podcast, make me laugh. Like, legitimately. Say some shit, they see it. Like, make me laugh, fuck around, like, you know, whatever. Don't start talking about Russia and Ukraine, Roe v. Wade and shit, like, you know, gendered bathrooms, you know, whatever. Like, trans issues, I like, just allow it. Please, just give me the funnies. If I want to listen to my new shit, I'll go to get a new stuff. But if you're a comedian, just give me the funnies. Give me the LOLs, please, I beg you. You're a professional comic, aren't you? Come on, man, make me fucking laugh. That's all I ask for. That's all I ask for. 